Hey everyone, I'd like to start off my second video by showing another English game that I played recently. So this was a match in be between Lancaster and York University in the War of the Roses in England. And I played fourth board for the A team. I played against a 150, which is approximately 1850 fide. So without further ado, the game. I had the white pieces. C4, knight f6, g3, g6, and we go into a double Fianchetto system. Now, usually I play e4 just straight off the bat here and um, go into my normal Botvinnik system with e4, d3, knight g2. I'm going to push f4 at some point, but I usually like to try and induce e5 first so that I have a pawn break with f4 there. So I played a different move order than I usually do, so knight c3 d6, d3, still waiting, knight bd7. Now this is actually quite a horrible move. This really isn't doing anything here, and if we can see here, uh, black appears to be playing a normal kid, uh, king's Indian type structure, and looks normal, but for some reason c5 or e5 have not yet been played. So this knight is still uh, quite misplaced here on d7 which is not good for black. And it doesn't really have any nice outposts if we look at the typical squares with uh, b6, c5, e5. Nothing's really happening here, and that's mainly because I have not pushed d4. My pawn is still on d3 here instead. So this is not good for black. Now I go e4. I need to develop my knight, and I want to put it on e2. So I figure, okay, I have to go through with this. She pushes e5 in response, and to this I'm quite happy. So we both complete our development here, and I see a5 on the board. Now, a5 is usually played with the king's Indian um, if white uh, fianchettos, as the king's Indian is largely based on pawn pushes along the king's side to try and initiate a pawn storm and deliver checkmate. It's hard to with the Fianchetto just because of a stronger and more solid position. So instead, black tries to gain space on the queen side by playing a move like a5 here. This, however, is somewhat um, misguided as I can strike in the center immediately and I play f4. So we see c6 in response, building up more pawns in the center. And I take my first long think of the game here and I come up with uh, a usual move, but first I'll show you, I was thinking about bishop e3, just developing the last minor, probably going to go queen d2 next. However, this is not yet playable because black simply has knight g4, and the bishop has nowhere to go along this diagonal here, and so it has to go back to d2, not really an advantageous spot for it. So instead, I played h3. This is normal with the uh, type of pawn structures here. And I'm just going to initiate pawn storms with f5, g4, and so on, and see what happens, basically. h3 also creates some luft for the king, as we'll see in just a minute here. Now, black actually spent half an hour here on her next move. Her pieces are quite discoordinated at this point, so she has to figure out what is best to do here. However, she did not find the best plan. What black should have played here is b5, or first rook b8, and then b5, um, just to develop queenside pawns and gain space, and then maybe uh, bishop can come out to one of these two uh, diagonals here, and the knight can also come out to b6, where it might be useful uh, with pawn pushes to a4, and so on. So, queen b6 instead, quite a horrible move. It uh, disrupts this plan of pushing b5 here, and it doesn't really do anything. This um, b7 pawn is now tied down, the knight has nowhere to go, therefore the bishop is tied down, and so the rook, and nothing is happening here for black. Just tossing in this check absolutely does nothing for the position, so I just go king h2, lovely space for the king, and now black once again takes a long time to think, and plays knight h5. So basically what she wants to do is be able to push f5 herself and get back into the game by um, occupying the center with pawns. However, I'm quicker than that. That is not able 
to happen. But first, let's look at a uh, couple of potential responses that I could have here. Now, if I ever want to play something like g4, kick the knight out, then here I um, does not work immediately. Let's look at g4, knight takes, bishop takes, e takes, knight takes, queen takes b2, and basically this whole file here, uh, this whole row is quite weak. Uh, the knight is hanging and White should not be happy about this position at all. So basically we don't want to allow the b2 pawn here to be taken. So what we're, uh, possible response might be b3, uh, also allowing bishop to possibly be developed to here, uh, challenging the scope of this bishop here. But if we look at b3, uh, black is just going to take here, take on f4, and if I take back with the g pawn, it's not too happy. I don't really have what I'm looking for. I've got an open G file, but um, it's harder to initiate an attack now at this point, and my pieces aren't well connected. If I play bishop takes, then black is happily going to trade off her knight for that bishop, and at that point uh, f5 will be played and she'll have the space in the center. So b3 doesn't really work out as an option there. Um, now, rook b1 might be another idea here, so if you guys want to stop in your video and take a look at any ideas, plans, tactics that might arise here, uh, you should do that. Otherwise, I'm going to proceed, and we have e takes f4 like usual, and knight takes f4, looks fine, however, um, black can just take immediately here. Because of the pin along the B file, I cannot recapture. That's not good for me. Black also has the response of knight takes g3 with the same idea, uh, just winning a pawn. So what I did instead, I push f5, making sure that e can never retake on f4 here. So black goes rook b8. She's finally starting to get her idea in about pushing b5 here and I go rook b1. I'm just over defending this pawn here and allowing this bishop now to move freely. So black realizes that the knight here on h5 is quite stranded and needs to get back into the game. f5 can no longer be played. It's not an option. Her plan was too slow. So she needs to move it back in. And here I have a couple of options of what I can do. Um, but first of all, it's most important to proceed with pawn pushing. That's what we're doing here anyways. So g4, black plays qa7, the b5, uh, b7 pawn can finally be moved, and now here comes uh, a strategic choice. Um, g5 is actually one of the better moves here. If we look at it, we just shut off, but this does allow the knight to come to h5, so that is a consideration in this position to be worried about. So another idea we have is to go a4 here. So a4 locks down any ideas of pushing b5, however this is probably actually what black is looking for. She's much worse here, she wants to be able to create a fortress, and a4 allows everything to be locked down. Black can play something like c5. Nothing's really going to happen in the queen side or in the center. All direction is going to be shifted over to the king side, and if she can lock down with an idea like h6, g5, everything's going to be hunky-dory, and she's not going to have anything to worry about because it's going to be a draw. Therefore, I develop a piece first, and I play knight g3. Knight g3 prevents any later ideas of knight coming here when I push g5. So, um, she plays b5 here. Another idea would be knight e8, uh, getting away from any tempo winning moves with g5 immediately here so that she can maybe even think about recapturing on f5. Um, but b5, and here comes another crucial couple of ideas in this position. Now I could once again just leave the position, maybe think about uh, say developing my queen out to e2, something like that, but if we look at that, um, then 
Uh, black can always go b4, lock things up again, and then uh, c5, and that's precisely what black is looking for. So first we need to take, and the c file is now open here. White can later make use of that with the rooks. And there's um, several winning ideas here. I chose a less accurate one. G5, in fact, is best. I have a personal problem with calculating uh, when there's multiple takebacks on both sides happening on different sides of the boards. Uh, this is a problem that I need to work on. B4 just doesn't work out because uh, we're going to take uh, and then take, take, and um, this is just lost. Uh, white is up a piece here. So black cannot go for any b4 ideas if g5, then knight e8, f6, and bishop h8 is going to happen here. Knight d5 is also another idea. Um, so basically knight d5 and f6 are going to be pieced together, and there's actually a lovely knight here in this line of bishop uh, h8. I'll let you pause your clocks, uh, pause your videos to find it. But uh, king g7, and we're going to go qh5. Knight h5 also works, but this uh, is just dead one. So um, instead in the game, I moved qe2. So basically the idea is we're going to um, allow the bishop now to move to e3 if we want to harass the queen. It uh, moves one piece out of the way so that the rooks can be connected here. And also, this knight now can come to this square instead. So this is crucial because now we can either go to here or here. And these will help with uh, an idea that I'll show you guys in just a minute. So, QE2. Now we see B4, knight D1, bishop a6, so black is continuing with an idea to pressure the weak d3 pawn here. Hard to capitalize upon that. So now I strike g5, knight e8, f6, uh, bishop h8, now knight f2. So basically the idea is, now that these pawns are on these dark squares here, we're going to hop this knight in and deliver checkmate if possible. Uh, however, black is most likely going to stop this. So. Uh, Black realizes that she can no longer allow the pawns to be there, so she has to sacrifice a piece for two pawns. Not too bad, but in this case, um, seeing as how the bishop is already locked out of the game, quite dire for her. So, uh, pieces trade, and I play rook d1 here. Basically, the idea is now the queen can move, and this pawn is overprotected, so we've got no funny business happening, uh, especially along with the previous skewer that was possible with the rook on f1. Now, my opponent here made the best of her situation and played a move that I did not see coming at all. b3. Now, this is actually isn't too bad. What I can do is I just don't care. I just take. Uh, if, however, I play a3, Black then has later ideas of coming in with the rook and coming into this lovely c2 square. Not too worrisome, but I prefer not to let black get anything. She can also try and tie things up with the later a4. So instead, I take, rook comes in. Now I develop bishop to e3. If queen later wants to move uh, with any potential knight g4 ideas to trade off pieces or anything like that, Queen coming into f2 and taking this knight can be a real issue. So having the bishop here guarding the f2 square is also important, and it also allows the connection of the rooks. That's why I played it. So qb7, further ganging up on the b2 pawn. Now here I actually thought I was a little bit worse for a second, and I was thinking about a couple different lines, namely bishop c1 and rook d2. Bishop c1, and I thought, well, the rooks are now disjointed again, disconnected, and basically there was no point in mine having gone bishop e3. Therefore, um, a4, and just going a3 and marching down, utilizing the pin 
here is basically Black's idea. So I did not want to let that happen. Rook d2, same thing, a4. Uh, basically this rook is stuck back here. Queen might have to come back here or something. I don't really want to be making backwards moves. I want to keep pushing my position forward. So what I need to do is I need to sacrifice the pawn. In return, I will later get this a5 pawn right here. So, rook a1, rook takes b2. We're going to pop the rook up to d2, rook b5. And the next series of moves are all forced. Just looking at uh, targeting the weak a5 pawn, black will try and defend but cannot. And she'll try and regroup her forces. So rook d a2, qc7, qd2, she can't hold. So now she needs to go rook fb8 and just double down the b-file and hope perhaps that she can get some action here going along like that. So, what else do I do? I take the pawn when it's free, rook b2, and now there's a interesting line that I calculated here. If, uh, so queen c1, if she goes rook c2, then I go qa3, rook c3, qa4, and I am able to escape the attacks on my queen. Um, so that's actually quite nice for me here. And she did not play into this, instead she took. And in my opinion, this is just sheer capitulation, and she's going to lose immediately. I should also mention at this point, I had 40 minutes on the clock to her approximately one to two minutes. So basically anything from this point on, uh, unless she's a 2700 blitz player, even then I highly doubt she could weasel her way out of the situation. So rook takes c1, bishop c8, and here I play a tempo wasting move, I play rook a7. Now, um, my later plan essentially is to double rooks on the a file and just trade off a pair of rooks so that she has less activity and can't do much with her minimal time. This is a very pragmatic solution to the uh, game uh, scenario. Um, I could have just gone rook a1 immediately, I did not need to go rook a7. Bishop e6 and rook c a1 and she plays bishop g7 just getting trying to get pieces back into the game rook a8 h5 rook takes b8 rook takes b8 now it's at this point at which my notation is a little bit shoddy uh, i did not run into the blitz mentality in which um, i rushed moves but i did indeed forget to write them down so essentially what happened in the end was the pieces came out too far I got my bishop in, and I delivered checkmate along the dark squares due to the weak color complex. So that being said, even if you're on the defensive, sometimes it's best to leave pieces at home. And that piece, namely in this scenario, is the dark squared bishop. Because you've got all of these dark squares that are weak around the king, you want to make sure that you've got a piece still controlling them namely this piece here, otherwise a weak com color complex will arise and it's very easy to get mated or some kind of attack will be delivered along those squares. So that's my video. Um, I won shortly after this. Uh, thanks for watching and please subscribe.